Hello and welcome to another Tea Time with Erin. I am enjoying these so much. Tea Time with Erin is when people have sent in personal questions via the comment section, direct messages, via my website, theelegantlife.com. And in these episodes with Tea Time with Erin, I'm going to be answering those. And all of them are going to come from that elegant lifestyle vibe. So let's settle in and get started. Okay, the first question, uh, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but basically it's this. Um, how would you find yourself and live the elegant life as a stay-at-home mother with a toddler? The current thing of just burying myself in chasing my son and housework day in and day out doesn't feel very life-giving. <laughs> I wanna feel grateful and blessed for all I have and cherish this season of life. I've always been very self-motivated but since having my son, I feel rather stuck and unfulfilled. How would you do, how would you deal with this in an elegant life fashion? For one, I have totally been there and I know what you're talking about. A lot of women who follow me are the kind of women who adore being a mother. It is the, one of the biggest joys in their life, yet at the same time, they don't want it to be everything because they start feeling lost. So I hear that. You feel like you're not even a part of the equation anymore. And so there are a variety of things that I can suggest and recommend that helped me, and then some tools that you might wanna look into, okay? So one of them is yes, organization, uh, but totally, when you come at it, as a whole big job that you have to do your whole house, that feels completely overwhelming and you know, I would probably not want to do it either. But what I would start with is a simple thing that will have a profound effect over your entire day. And that is coming up with a routine for your day. And what I can do is I'm actually going to send you, for those of you that don't know, my coaching experience started way back being a parenting coach. So I have many resources that I give out to my one-on-one -on -one clients when I feel that they're struggling with, with parenting as one of their issues. Uh, I can send you a routine that feeds you, that feeds your toddler. And it is fantastic. It changed people's lives because they were put in the equation again and you didn't have to be a constant entertainer, a constant monitor, security guard, safety <laughs> person. So I will send that to you. But in general, there's things that your child needs throughout the day. He needs sleep, he needs food, he needs uh, movement, physical activity, he needs stimulation creativity, creati creatively, and he also needs alone time. And this is something that a lot of people have not taught their kids. It is something that saves you because you need alone time too. And in that routine, it shows you that there's an alone time hour and he gets used to his alone time hour being in his room with the door closed and it will transform your day so that at least you feel like you've got some reprieve. And let me tell you, kids thrive on routine and ritual. They're happier, they're healthier, and they're more well behaved. So I'm gonna send that to you. And if anybody's watching this who's a parent who has a toddler and would like that too, just please message me. Again, you can go to theelegantlife.com and use the contact form. Okay, that's the biggest, pro most profound thing that I can suggest that will make a big change to your day. There's a variety of other things. I have a program called How to Get Your Child to Listen, which the new version 2.0 is actually being released to the world in probably one month. So I can also share that with you. That covers so much that can be really helpful. And I also have something called the Life Balance Formula that is also coming out in a month. So stay tuned, but this is the first thing that you can really take action on to make an immediate change. All right, let's go into question number two. 
Okay, the next question is one that says, Aaron, how do I get my love for life and living back and have love and happiness fill my void? Sorry, that's a loaded question I know and I am struggling so hard to remedy, but so much I wave off a lack of desire or want. So this, this is a loaded question, but truly I do have a, a recommendation for you. Um, look, we go through ebbs and flows and when we're feeling low, it means that A, we are disconnected from a higher vibration. And higher vibrations are always things that come back when we are in connection to home, where we're really from, the divine. So we are having a disconnect there. And then right under that comes joy. And you're thinking, well, how do I bring joy back into my life? I want you to start asking yourself this question every single morning when you wake up, okay? Have a journal beside your bed and ask yourself this question. I'll give you three ways because there might be different ways that would resonate more with you. You could ask yourself, what would make today amazing? Or what pleasure would my soul like to experience today? What would my soul, what does my soul want to enjoy today. You can also say, what am I curious about? What am I curious about today? And really living life with a sense of curiosity is something that can take you back to the path of joy. If you're one who's gotten off the path for a little bit, I would say the number one thing is start a morning ritual and do these two things. One, start some kind of a meditation. I have on the elegantlife.com, it's called the six phase visioning meditation. If you do that every morning or every couple of mornings a week, that is a gorgeous way. It's got clearing, it's got visioning for the future for manifesting, it's got connecting and coming back home, it's got all the parts of wholeness that will create a real vortex for you to get back in line and start putting a very high vibration in your life. So I would check that out. You can simply say a mantra, for example, Aham. And again, set your timer for five minutes and do that. That silence. Silence is your connection back to the divine. So I would say meditation is a huge one. And then the second thing is that. Have a curiosity. The path to bring you back to the path of joy is curiosity. Get curious. Like, I wonder what it would feel like to and finish that sentence. And it could be totally out there. And you could just spend a little time Googling. You might end up on the funniest websites. Or I wonder, I wonder what it would be like to go to Tuscany. And then you can search YouTube videos. Um, I wonder what it would be like to know how to cook the perfect. And then you could, search online for some cooking classes and maybe to take one class or invite a private chef to your house. I wonder what it would be like. And it doesn't have to cost money. I wonder what I would see if I took a different path when I go for my walk every day. These kind of things just come from a sense of curiosity and ask yourself what kind of things would make today amazing. What kind of things would my soul like to enjoy or experience today? And that is a way back to loving life and, and feeling happy again. Okay, thank you for your question. Next question. Okay, I love this. 
This one I giggled at because, I mean, these are all really loaded questions. So I know if we were sitting out on my balcony, we would have a long conversation. But here's her question, and I'm gonna pick certain parts out, come back to different parts at another time. All right, basically Kayla asks, I'd want to know most about how to become financially prosperous, but I'd also want to know about how to have more romance in your marriage and also how to overcome past traumas and how to feel safe. Hmm. Okay. One of the things I'm really going to say off the bat is how to feel safe. Last week's video that I did on how to cultivate self love is actually all about how to feel safe. Okay. This is a huge one and I'm glad to answer this because this is the month of February, the, the month of love. So how do you do this? Well, you know, let me tell you something. What is romance to you? What does that mean? Because to everybody, it's going to mean something different. I know women that, that need to, you know, make love once a week. I know women that need to make love only once a month. I know women that don't really need that, but they still want to have a partnership. So don't let the collective consciousness of what we've been told, what we've read, the movies we watch to be your guide on what romance means. I want you to come up with your own definition. What do you need from your partner? Make a list of that. Because without you knowing it and being clear about that, your husband will never, or your partner will never know either. I mean, they're not mind readers. And then second of all, you have to communicate. You have to sit down in a very non-confrontational way, you know, create a beautiful evening and say, I, I wondered if tonight we could have a little chat. I can bring the wine or I can bring the tea or whatever you guys like and uh, make it a beautiful event and just share with him that you've been feeling like romance is missing from your life, but you want it to be very clear about what romance means. And then you have a beautiful conversation about what you're feeling that you require. And be honest and keep coming back to I. I need, I need, I'm really feeling like I wanna be more connected to you by this. And when you come to your partner in a non-accusatory way, then they they are more open to receive what you're saying. My husband and I, I would say we have a conversation once a year, multiple times a year. We just had a big conversation last month because he's been going through a lot of his own stuff and I wanted to give him the space for that, but then it came time when I needed to talk to him again. And just from that conversation, things have already started changing. He makes the effort. Now, if your partner is not open to making an effort and not wanting to change and not wanting to talk, then that's something that you're gonna to need to really delve into. Either you do some marriage counseling or some coaching, um, that's when maybe someone else needs to come in the picture, okay? But I would say first, if you get clear about your own needs and you create a good situation for, for openness, for them to receive, and then you share with them what you, what you need with this energy environment, this kind of vibe. That's your first step. And you know, what my husband and I do at least once a month, okay? Once a week would put too much stress and too much pressure, but once a month we plan a date night. And we do this the last Sunday of every month. We come together, we decide what is something that we would like to do that month. And we discuss it, we chat about it. And you know, we really try to come back to the times when we dated and didn't have kids. What did we like to do? Did we like to go out to dinner? Did we like to go for bike rides? Did we like to go to galleries? Did we like to go see live music, plays? foreign films, um, cook a dinner together from a cookbook, uh, go for walks, holding hands down by water, uh, what 
is it? And we come up with that date, we schedule it, we book the babysitter, we do it all that day, and then we put it in both of our calendars, and at least once a month, we have that real connection. I hope that really gives you some, some good tips and, and a way to move forward with this. Let me know if you have any more questions. All right, everybody. Well, goodness, I haven't drank much of my tea and I wanted to tell you what I was drinking. This time I have lemon balm tea. Lemon balm is so good for calming the system. If you have anything like tiredness, overwhelm, adrenal fatigue, lemon balm tea is the ticket. All right, thank you so much for joining me on this Tea Time with Erin. And once again, if you have any questions, please write them to me. If you like these episodes, please like. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. We'll see you next week for another video. Thank you.